Today is Friday, March 15, 2024, and you're listening to ZIZ Radio 96.1 FM. Today is The Edge. Welcome to the program. I am Devon Cornelius, your host for today. I will be discussing the judgment regarding Vibes Cartel, a DJ Palmer out of Jamaica. This has been making the rounds on social media and is being talked about across the region and the people have been looking on, wondering what would be the outcome. The clip played earlier uh, by GQ was uh, Nakishma Rogers of Angola. She's an attorney there, and she brought down the Privy Council decision. She was speaking on THG's news today for March 15th with Mervyn Hanley, and she took the opportunity to explain uh, the judgment regarding Adija Palmer, or as we know him, um, vibes cartel and so i will use this opportunity to break down or to give some more information so that we could get a better understanding of the judgment and what has been going on in the breakdown uh, miss rogers said you know in her experience it is unlikely that there um will be a retrial and in her legal opinion vibes cartel may be free but we will want to hear your views and opinions on this. If you've been following Vibes Cartel's judgment and the whole story of when he was first arrested um, for the murder of uh, Lizard Williams, and we'll take your calls later at 465-2555 or our overseas line at 718-577-2916. All right, so... On March 13, 2014, after a trial lasting 64 days before Campbell J and a jury in the Home Circuit Court, the appellants Sean Campbell, Adija Palmer, and Kehiba Jones and Andre St. John were convicted by a majority of 10 to 1 of the murder of Clive Lizard Williams, the deceased. A fifth defendant, Shane Williams, was acquitted. On April 3, 2014, the judge sentenced the appellants to imprisonment for life with hard labor, specifying minimum terms before be becoming or before becoming eligible for parole of 25 years, Campbell and Jones, and 30 years for St. John, and 35 years for Vibes Cartel. The prosecution case was that the deceased and Lama Chow had been given two unlicensed firearm belonging to Vibes Cartel for safekeeping. It alleged that Palmer gave Chow and the deceased a deadline of 8 p.m. on August 14, 2011 to return them, with which they failed to comply. It is alleged that as a consequence, Chow and the deceased were summoned by Campbell to Palmer's house, that's Vibes Cartel's house, at Shallow or Swallowfield Avenue, Havendale. They went there by taxi on August 16th, 2011, accompanied by Campbell, and on arrival were met by Vibes Cartel, Jones, and St. John. Vibes Cartel asked what plans Chow and the deceased had for replacing the firearms, to which the deceased replied that he would replace them. They were then both attacked, after which Chow saw the deceased lying motionless on the ground, with Jones bending over him. Chow escaped, but the deceased was never seen again, and calls to his mobile phone went unanswered. On August 22, 2011, a team of police officers went to Palmer's house, that's Vibes Cartel, to investigate an alleged homicide. They noticed that the house smelled of disinfectant. On August 24, 2011, Chow provided a witness statement to the police. A police team accompanied him to Havendale, where he pointed out Palmer's house. Chow was the sole eyewitness relied on by the prosecution. On August 25, 2011, the police cordoned off the perimeter wall of the Swallowfield premises, treating the premises as a crime scene. 
When they returned on 27th August 2011, they found that the crime interior of the house had been destroyed by fire. On August 29, 2011, a police forensics team conducted an investigation. They reported a foul odor emanating from the living room of the house. On a further police visit on September 30th, 2011, it was discovered that the rear of the house had been demolished. The police dug at the premises but did not find a body. The appellants were arrested on September 30th, 2011. The police seized mobile phones from Palmer, that's Vibes Cartel, St. John and Williams, which were delivered to the Communications Forensics and Cybercrimes Unit of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. The evidence derived from the mobile phones included text messages, Blackberry messages, voice notes, and a video. A Blackberry torch phone taken from Palmer and its cards were put in evidence as trial for Exhibit 14C. Among the text messages from other phones were those between the deceased and his girlfriend, Miss Jackson, on August 16, 2011. At trial, a CD-ROM with telecommunications data was put in evidence by the prosecution. This had been brought into existence in this way. By notice, issued purportedly under Section 16.2 of the Interpretation of Communications Act, Corporal Sean Brown of the Jamaica Constabulary Force asked Digicel, a communications provider, to provide the communication data of various persons. Joseph Simmons, a Digicel employee, then extracted the relevant data from Digicel's computer and downloaded it onto two CDs marked JS1 and JS2. So one of them is the master copy and the other one is the working copy, which he delivered to Corporal Brown. JS1 and JS2 were said to be identical. Only JS2 was available at trial, JS1 having been lost after it had been delivered to one of the prosecutors in the case who had died before the trial took place. Corporal Brown said that he used the data from JS2 to create a spreadsheet attributing names and aliases to the various persons sending and receiving communications. The prosecution case was that the correspondence and communication media taken as a whole with Chow's evidence proved the fact of the killing. The reason for the killing, the method of disposal of the deceased's body, and the identity of at least one of the killers, namely Adija Palmer, a.k.a. Vibes Cartel. The appellant's counsel maintained that the request to Digicel and Digicel's provision to the police of the data in JS2 was in breach of the ICA because Corporal Brown was not authorized to request or receive the data and because the police failed to issue a notice to Digicel in the correct form. They submitted, among other things, that the data on JS2 was inadmissible underground that it had been obtained in breach of the fundamental right to the protection of privacy of communications guaranteed by the Charter of Fundamental Rights and Freedoms, which was enacted by the Charter of Fundamental Rights and Freedoms Constitutional Amendment Act 2011, contained in the Jamaican Constitution. Now, it also speaks to, I won't be able to go, of course, into all of this because there's a lot of information here. If you've been following the judgment, it spoke to juror misconduct, and I'll share, um, and jury issues, so I'll share some information on that. It reads, and I quote, it is convenient to address the first issues. Let me start it again, sorry. Quote, it is convenient to address first the issues relating to the jury. On behalf of the appellants, it is alleged that the judge failed to investigate sufficiently allegations of jury misconduct, which should have led to the discharge of the jury. It is further alleged that the jury should not have been invited to retire to consider its verdict so late in the day on March 13, 2014, 
with the result that the jury may have felt under pressure to arrive at a, at a verdict. These issues will be considered in turn. Now, on January 7, 2014, the judge received the report of an encounter between a member of the jury and one of the counsel appearing for the defense. The judge carried out an inquiry, but it was not recorded in the transcript. After discussion with counsel, the judge recalled the jury and informed them that he had received a report of a member of the jury meeting a member of the defense team and that an inquiry had taken place. He reminded the jury of the vital importance that they conduct themselves as judges. The judge said that having spoken with the juror and the counsel involved in the presence of counsel, he was firmly of the view that what transpired was an innocent interaction occurring out of inadvertence and that it was most likely to affect the members of the jury in the performance of their duty. He instructed the jury to use their best efforts to avoid interacting with anyone. The trial then resumed. No objection to this of no objection to this course was made by the prosecution or the defense. You're listening to the Edge on ZIZ Radio, 96.1 FM. I'm your host, Devon Cornelius. And if you're just tuning in and reading the judgment from the Privy Council uh, relating to Sean Campbell, Adija Palmer, that's Vibes Cartel, Kahiwa Jones, and Andre St. John, the appellants versus the King, and Jamaica from the Court of Appeal of Jamaica. And they met before one, two, three, four, five judges. Judgment given on March 14th, 2014, and heard on February 14th and 15th, 2024. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll continue the conversation here on The Edge for March 15th, 2024. Stay tuned. Join us every Wednesday for In Focus a weekly talk show produced by the St. Kitts Navy's Information Service, where we provide exclusives with key persons within the government and discuss pertinent, relevant, and interesting matters that affect us all. Tune in every Wednesday, live on ZIZ Radio, and streamed live on Facebook at SKNIS Media and ZIZ Online. In Focus, your government, your business. Welcome back to the Edge here on ZIZ Radio, 96.1 FM. I'm your host, Devon Cornelius, and thank you so much for joining me on the program for today, Friday, March 15th, 2024. If you're just tuning in, we are on the topic of the judgment um, given on uh, Thursday, 14th March, 2024, regarding um, Adija Palmer, that's Vibes Cartel, and his co-accused. Now... This judgment also, um, as I mentioned, it speaks to jury misconduct. And I, just before the break, shared with you the first jury incident. And I will now share with you the second jury incident. Nothing turns out on this first jury incident for present purposes the appellants do not rely on it in support of their appeals now the second jury incident and i'm reading from the judgment and i quote it says on february 6 2014 by which time the trial had been running for almost eight weeks a member of the jury to whom we will refer as juror 11 made a report to the registrar who in return reported it to the judge the judge invited counsel to join him in chambers the meeting was recorded 
The defendants were not present. Juror 11 told the judge that after the trial had begun, she had visited her son, who was detained in custody at Horizon Adult Correctional Center. While she was waiting in the lobby for her son's arrival, the defendant, Andre St. John, came into the area. He had seen her with her son. He appeared to be surprised to see her. When she spoke to her son on a subsequent occasion, he told her that the defendant, Palmer, mentioned to him that St. John had told him that he had seen his mother, but that Palmer had not told the other defendants about it. On hearing this, Juror 11 had become concerned for her son's safety. She gave as the reason for her fear the fact that the defendants now knew that her son was at Horizon Adult Correctional Center and that he and St. John were housed on the same block. Juror 11 became distressed when giving her account, and she was not questioned further. After some discussion, the judge indicated, with the apparent agreement of all counsel present, that he would discharge Juror 11. Counsel then raised with the judge whether the other members of the jury were aware of what had, tran or what had, what had transpired. The registrar stated that Juror 11 and the four women had spoken to him. He had inquired if anybody else was aware of the situation and he had been told they were not. The judge then invited the four women of the jury to whom jury 11 had also spoken to attend the meeting in chambers. The four women gave an account of how jury 11 had spoken to her. The four women explained that the other members of the jury were not aware of what Juror 11 had said. She assured the judge that she felt able to continue with her duties as a juror, although she intended to say something to the older jurors to, quote, to soothe everybody's mind, end of quote. The judge suggested that the four women might want to tell the other jurors, so far as juror 11 was concerned, something along the lines of, quote, the court feels that her personal situation will not allow her to continue and you don't know what was said to us, end of court. On the resumption of the trial in open court, the judge discharged Jury 11 explaining that she had a, quote, personal difficulty which will cause her not to be able to serve on the panel further, end of quote. It was not suggested by Jury 11 that any threat was made by any of the defendants. Rather, Jury 11 was in fear for her son in the event that the defendants were convicted. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to ZIZ Radio 96.1 FM, and we are on the judgment regarding Adija Palmer Vibes Cartel, and this is um, news in all corners of the region, and I dare say the international community, especially in the entertainment industry. Uh, people have uh, been following this. If you go through social media, uh, when the judgment was given on the 14th of March, 2024, there was jubilation, celebration of of um, his fans. People were excited um, as it signaled that he may be freed. Now, this judgment also speaks to a third jury incident. And so I'm getting deeper and deeper into this. Again, I cannot go into detail because the judgment, I have about 19 pages here and I cannot read 19 pages of, of um, all of this here to you, the listeners. But I'll try my best to summarize and to give you the, the um, I'd head straight to the, to, to the point and give you the details that are most um, important in explaining what took place. Now, 
the jury, a third jury incident was brought to the judge's attention on 13 March 2014, the last day of his summing up. The judge convened a hearing in chambers, which was attended by counsel for the prosecution, including Ms. Paula Llewellyn, who at the time, KC, sorry, QC, now KC, the Director of Public Prosecutions and Counsel for the Defendants. The defendants were not present. The judge told counsel that it had been brought to his attention that a member of the jury had attempted to bribe other members of the jury. As the judge expressed it, he had attempted to, quote, persuade another member of the jury by offering a $500,000 payment to do a particular thing. To go which way? I don't know what it is. Whatever way, end of quote. The juror who had made these offers, to whom we'll refer to as Juror X, was said to be the same juror who had the encounter with defense counsel, which gave rise to the first jury incident. Are you guys following me? So the juror who had, who made the offers, was said to be the same juror who had the encounter with defense counsel, which gave rise to the first jury incident. The forewoman was invited into the judge's chambers. She was questioned at length by the judge as to the circumstances in which the offers were made. The forewoman had recorded an exchange between herself and juror X. The recording was played in chambers but was of poor sound quality. On the forewoman's account to the judge, although the direct contact with her was made on 13 March when a bribe was offered contact had been made by juror X quote over a period of time with other jurors and they confessed it to me end of quote she had been told by another juror that he wanted to talk to her and that is how she knew to record the conversation on 13th March she said that she had been suspicious of juror X from the onset of the trial and had been watching him. Over time, he had started going to jurors and telling them what, quote, we need to do. She would ask if he was listening to the evidence and he would say, quote, no, we just need to Lego demand them, end of quote. When asked by the DPP how many jurors juror X had spoken with, the forewoman answered, quote, 11 of us. He spoke to nine persons first, end of quote. It is 11.22 and you're listening to the Edge here on ZIZ Radio 96.1 FM. I'm your host, Devon Cornelius, speaking on the judgment um, regarding Adija Palmer Vibes Cartel and his uh, co-accused from the Court of Appeal of Jamaica. And again, this judgment was given on March 14, 2024, and heard on the 14th and 15th of February, 2024. This is being talked about in all corners of the Caribbean. And if you tuned in earlier um, from the start of the show, um, Nakishma Rogers of Angola, she uh, brought down the Privy Council's decision as uh, she's an attorney and she was speaking on THG's News Today for March 15th with Mervyn Hanley. Thank you guys so much for joining me on the program for today, 11.23. Now let me uh, share with you. We have some callers coming in. We have some callers coming in. All right. So we're going to begin taking some calls. A caller, good morning and welcome to the conversation. Yes, that's good. Yeah, Javan. The whole of that matter, mm -hmm. you know, who squashed the early uh, jurors, every one of them, the court was supposed to squash. I mean, for in contempt mm -hmm. of juror tamper, all of them, the judge should have um, stamped out. Mm -hmm. And the case, we really need to try over. 
Mm-hmm. So you, you you feel that they should go they should start from the beginning again because from, based from off of what I've just read mm. from the beginning the case will, will start from fresh start. Mm. Do you think it's going to be a different outcome though? Well, it must come a, a different outcome. Mm. It must come a different outcome because you have these things happen there at mm. the site, and then after you had the place cut enough somebody been been paid to destroy the house, the property. Mm-hmm. So this was no no small small um incident. This is a big fish you got there mm-hmm. in a small pan. Mm-hmm. Yes, but you 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 keep still. <laughs> you can break out walls. Devil uh. man, come on. Mm-hmm. And if this have ever if this got you it all going to make spread a, a, bad, a bad reputation across the whole border. Mm. And that is my input. Mm. All right, Colin, thank you for your contribution to the program. You're listening to The Edge. The phone lines are open and we are taking your calls at 465-255 or 718-577-2916. We are on the topic of the uh, judgment regarding vibes at cartel. Let's head back to the phone lines and we'll take some more calls. They call her good morning and welcome yeah, to the Yeah, good program. morning. Now, listen, the, the, the sentence thing, what you're talking about, but uh, all them who want to go do where they got to do, and now they want to get out, and they gonna can't get out because they got to go to the court, that the court could decide what went on with all the evidence. All right. Thank you for your contribution to the program. We have a caller? All right. It is 11... 26. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to the Edge on ZIZ Radio 96.1 FM. I shared with you three incidents of, of jury misconduct. And from what I've been seeing, have a call. Let's take a pick. Hello, caller. Good morning. You're on the air. Thank you much, man. Thank you much. Yes. Good morning. Yes, caller. Good morning. You're on the air. Yes, my... My input in this matter is that the first caller is correct. The judge should have dismissed the jury and uh, to have a new trial. Look here, how much time passed? As far as I see, justice should be justice. And that, let me reiterate, that the jury should have been dismissed and uh, try over the case again. But that's my input. Thank you much. Thank you, Carlos, so much for your contribution to the program. So, as I was uh, saying, I shared with you on uh, uh, three incidents of jury misconduct. the The opinion that I'm that I'm gathering here and from other spheres is that, um, based on the fact that there had been um, at least three cases of juror or jury misconduct, there should have been a mistrial from the onset. And this should not have been allowed to go on and on and on. And the Privy Council has ruled that this go back to the Jamaica Court of Appeal and they will decide whether it is going to be a mistrial. But three cases of, of, of jury misconduct? I mean, you could understand the seriousness of this case. You're talking about an allegation of murder, or a, a murder, and somebody... Um, um, I would say as high profile as, as Vibes Cartel, you know, and based off of what I read from this judgment, you can tell that questions, questions loom, questions are there. People are questioning, um, you know, what really transpired. And so if you had three cases of jury misconduct, the public's opinion appeared to be that it should have been a mistrial but we want to get more of your feedback and opinion on this and of course i'll be sharing more details from the judgment the phone lines are open and we're taking your calls at 465-2555 or 718-577-2916 if we have no calls i think we could take a break and when we come back i will uh, head back into the judgment and share more information with you so let's take this break and we'll be right back 
from the heart of Zerizad Radio comes a political talk show like no other. The Edge with host Stephen Cornelius giving you his take on the biggest stories happening in governance today. Got something to say? Let's hear it. Give us a call at 869-465-2555 Monday to Friday from 11 a.m. to 12 noon. One solid hour of in-depth analysis of the machinery that makes our country tick. The Edge, cutting into the matters at hand. Join us on ZIZ TV for Youth Lounge with Skaniper, a talk show on vital topics such as tourism, entrepreneurship, education, religion, sex education, and mental health. Featuring experts from St. Kitts and Nevis and the Caribbean region. Tune in live on the first and third Wednesday of every month at 8.30 p.m. on ZIZ TV. The Kim Collins Athletic Stadium and the Nevis Athletic Stadium will be energized by SKN's top athletes for the 2024 TDC Track and Field Interschool Championship. Be a part of the historic multi-city event when SKN Athletics bring you four days of track and field on Thursday, March 14th and Friday, March 15th at the Kim Collins Athletic Stadium and Saturday, March 16th and Sunday, March 17th at the Nevis Athletic Stadium. stadium. Saturday tickets are $30, preferred seating, $15 for adults on the ground, and $10 for children on the ground. Sunday tickets are $40, preferred seating, $20 for adults on the ground, and $15 for children on the ground. Tickets are available at City Drugstore Nevis and Digicel St. Kitts. St. Kitts. It's energy, energy, energy for the 2024 TDC Track and Field Interschool Championships. March 14th to March 17th at the Kim Collins Athletic Stadium and the Nevis Athletic Stadium. Sponsored by TDC, the Department of Sports St. Kitts, and the Department of Sports Nevis. Energy! Energy! for DPH Cough and Cold for all your cold and flu symptoms, relief, rest, and ready again. Also available in children's formulation. A Samsung tablet today. Boy, what much madness is this? Girl, Digicel is giving away a tablet a day for 20 days when you activate any prime plan. Switch to Digicel, sign up for new home internet, or even when you pay a monthly bill in full. Tracy, 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 we are going so fast. I coming back. I go and make sure I qualify to win. But Lord, you can dial star 141 pound sign to activate plans or pay bills in the My Digicel app or visit any Digicel store to sign up for new internet and switch. New winners are announced daily. It's madness in March. <laughs> 20 Samsung tablets in 20 days. A Samsung tablet today. Simply more rewards and more value. Digicel, better together. Promotion ends March 2024. Hello and welcome back to The Edge and ZIZ Radio, 96.1 FM. We have a caller on the line. Let's take this call. Uh, caller, good yeah. morning. Yeah, good morning, Devon. Yes, welcome to the program. I'm good here, man. Now, this whole thing where you read out about this voice cartel, mm. whether it's voice truck tell, uh, bus tell, what's that wrong? Cannot end right unless you, 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 you go back over it again. Mm. So, if they continue with this thing here, down to the end, whatever the result come out is not going to be right because it been propelled and wrong. He say, she say, ex say, and the 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 contamination of the evidence and all of that mm -hmm. that will cause problem where it started and spread out all over the world where it is. So, like the callers them said before. I agree with them, start all over again. Mm -hmm. Crush everything. Now, Devon, if you got a box of match in your hand and you're going to light your stove, and the box of match drop in a bucket of water, and you take out one of the match and you try to scratch it and the brim can drop off, what are I going to tell you? Buy, buy a new, um, buy some more massive matches. Oh, okay. That is what <laughs> need to be done with this case. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Oh, my God. Oh, Thank Devon. you. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, something I just 
some information just come to my uh, my radar, but okay, I'll leave that for next week. All right, Colin, thank you for your contribution. Yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, it is important for me to share, though, that the conclusion in this judgment is that the convictions should be quashed and the question whether there should be a retrial uh, should be remitted to the Court of Appeal of Jamaica, right? So that is what the Privy Council is suggestion, suggesting. They go back and they have a retrial. They start from the beginning again. But my question is, well, who's saying it's going to happen again? Who's saying we're going to have another mistrial? More cases of jury misconduct. Now let's hold. Let's take up in on the callers, right? And let me share um, some more information from the judgment. Now the judgment from the Privy Council also speaks to the jury retirement issue, and it reads, and I quote: "It is convenient to restate that relevant events in a little more detail." The judges summing up. Occupied some six days. He finished his summing up at 3.42 p.m. on March 13, 2014, at which time he sent the jury out to consider their verdicts. The jury returned at 5.35 p.m. And the four women informed the court that they had not reached a unanimous verdict. After an inquiry, which should not have been made she stated that they were divided 10 to 1. counsel for the prosecution then pointed out that the statutory minimum period of two hours after which the court could accept a majority verdict had not yet expired the judge then simply told the jury that the time at which he could accept a majority verdict had not yet arrived and sent them out to resume their, deliberate, their deliberations. At 6.08 p.m., the jury returned, and by a majority of 10 to 1, they convicted all four appellants of murder. The fifth defendant, Shane Williams, was acquitted by a unanimous verdict. It appears that no direction as to the circumstances in which the court could accept a majority verdict was ever given. Now, Section 47 of the Jury Act in Jamaica gives a circuit court the power to permit a jury to separate and go at large unto the point at which they retire to consider their verdicts. The implication is that once they have retired to consider their verdict, they cannot separate until they have completed their deliberations and returned verdicts or have been discharged from doing so. The board was informed during the hearing of the appeal that no provision is made in Jamaica for a jury once retired to be sent to a hotel overnight and to resume its deliberations the next day. On behalf of the appellants, it is submitted that what occurred placed unacceptable pressure on the jury and that there was a real possibility that as a result of the jury failed as a result sorry the jury failed to consider the evidence with the attention it required in light of the conclusion that the appeals against conviction must be allowed on the ground of jury misconduct the board does not propose to address this ground in any detail we would emphasize that the jury must be permitted to, to deliberate and to return its verdicts free from any pressure this admirably admirably expressed in the supreme court of judicature of jamaica criminal bench book 2017 which states at section 25 Two, the jury should not be placed under any pressure to arrive at a verdict. It is for that reason that the summation should not be conclu concluded close to the end of the court day. The jurors should not have any anxiety, for example, about getting home, etc., affecting their deliberations, and it goes on and on and on. And it's really a long list of things here. Um, about what went down in the whole trial and I can't share everything with you but 
it is definitely worth um, you know, sharing some highlights of it. Now, to wrap it up, it says, it speaks to now the section uh, about retrial. Section 14.2 of the judicature, that is the appellant or the appellate, the appellate jurisdiction act. It permits a retrial where a conviction is quashed and quashed is um I thought it was quashed but it's quashed, which is um legal jargon for reject. So section fourteen of the Judicature Act permits a retrial where a conviction is quashed if that is in the interests of justice. The board proposes to follow in this case its unusual practice of remitting to sorry I think I read that wrong let me let me start from the beginning the board proposes to follow in this case its usual practice of remitting to the local courts the question whether a retrial should be ordered and the conclusion for the reasons set out above and that is all that I read the board will humbly advise His Majesty that the appellant's convictions should be quashed and that the question whether there should be a retrial should be remitted to the Court of Appeal of Jamaica. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to The Edge here on ZIZ Radio 96.1 FM. Uh, Ronnie, could you pull up that? clip for me again and I was played earlier Jura uh, Miss Con Vibes Cartel case explained that, um, GQ played it earlier for me we, we could take a break and when we come back we'll get it let's take a break and when we come back we'll get the clip with the, the attorney explaining it let's take this break we're invested in your success. I need to pay my final year tuition. We're invested in your happiness. I want the biggest wedding ever for the love of my life. We're invested in your peace of mind. A home of my own? Finally. At Republic Bank, we're invested in you. Your dreams, your goals, your wants and needs drive us to be our best selves. It's because of you we innovate and push forward. A Caribbean bank serving the Caribbean for almost two centuries. Call or come in and talk to us about your goals today. Public Bank, we're the one for you. National Caribbean Insurance would like to know you better. Customers with life and health policies are kindly asked to visit our offices to update your information. Data captured would include your address, telephone number, and email address. Customers should also provide two valid photo IDs and a proof of address. Help us so that we can help you more effectively and efficiently. We serve, we protect, we satisfy. That's NCI. Let's get to know you better. Get ready to experience the coolest spot in town. Introducing Cool Runnings Bar and Grill where the vibes are always hot and the food is simply irresistible. Indulge in our mouth-watering specialties like managed water, curry goat, and a variety of pastas, saltfish soup, and much more. But wait, it gets even better. Join us every Friday for amazing drink specials that won't break the bank. And don't miss out on our karaoke Saturdays where you can showcase your talent. So why wait? Come on down to Cool Runnings Bar and Grill and experience the ultimate fusion of flavor for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Located on Factory Road, call us at 667-4556. See you there. Welcome back to The Edge here on ZIZ Radio, 96.1 FM. I'm your host, Devon Cornelius. We'll now hear from Nakishma Rogers of Angola as she breaks down the Privy Council's decision. She's an attorney, and she was speaking on THG's News Today for today, March 15th, with Mervyn Hanley. Let's have the clip, please. Two big questions arising from the case of Adija Palmer in the Privy Council yesterday, and Adija Palmer, as we know, is Vibes Cartel. The two questions that have been burning, what is the effect of the decision of the Privy Council as it relates to the quashing of the convictions, one, and two, the remitting of the case to the Jamaican Court of Appeal? First of all, with regard to the quashing of the convictions, 
it means that he should be released. There's no reason to keep him in custody because the convictions have been quashed by the court. They're null and void. Now, the decision to remit the question of whether or not the case should be retried simply means that the Privy Council did not decide on the merits of the case, whether he was innocent or guilty. What they decided on was the process. Two of the issues raised by the appellants, and Cartel was one of the appellants, he was the second appellant, two of the issues raised were one, jury issues, and two, the manner in which evidence was procured in the matter, which they would have argued rendered the conviction or the convictions unsafe, as we like to say in law. So it really goes to process, which means that technically they could cure the process through a retrial. Um, whether or not a retrial is practical or even possible after all this time has passed, that's a separate question. My professional opinion, having prosecuted for a long time, it's unlikely that a retrial is going to happen. So essentially, those that have been calling for free the world boss, he is free. He's free. Attorney Nakishma Rogers of Anguilla. Breaking down the Privy Council's decision, I would have shared with you at least three incidents of jury misconduct. And uh, we have a caller on the line. Let's take this call. Caller, good morning. Welcome to the program. Okay, I think we lost that call. I'm here again. Hello, caller, you're on the air. Right, thank you very much. The matter to me is a simple matter is to go back to trial. This, the, the judge was, for me, was to just dismiss the panel of the jury and uh, to have the matter, the matter thoroughly investigated. Mm. Forensic research, forensic research on the, in the investigation. In that, she was able to come up even to get evidence of the burning of the, um, the, build, of the property, even, the, even that. But on the whole, Nothing else could be um, otherwise than to go back to the trial, go back to a trial. Mm. And that's my input. Thank you much. Okay, Colin, thank you for your contribution to the program. Good. Uh, Good. The phone lines remain open, and we're taking your calls at 465 2555 or 718 577 2916. The question is being asked, and as uh, Ms. Rogers made or alluded to, is whether a retrial could happen after so long, over a decade, you know? Do you have sufficient evidence for this retrial? I don't know. Let's head back to the phone lines and we'll continue taking your calls. Or oh, we have no callers, all right. Phone lines are open, though. Call us at 465-2555 or 718-577-2916. So the effect of the judgment means that he should be released. And the remitting it back to Jamaica, the Privy Council did not decide on the merit of the case, but rather the process. And so, you know, the jury misconduct and all of that. And so, suggesting or ordering a mistrial is basically saying, go back to the drawing board and let's, let's, get, let's take this thing from the top again. Is that going to happen? Attorney Rogers is saying it's highly unlikely. Let's head back to the phone lines and we'll take this call. Hello, caller. Good morning and welcome to the program. Oh, good morning, Mr. Host. Good morning. You are uh, discussing the uh, the matter with Vice Carter? Yes. As I understand it, and this is very critical, because what happened with that matter, according to the the Lord, the law Lord. England have um, their laws mm. in regard to jury, and what occurred in Jamaica. According to the law in England, the judge could have dismissed the jury, and the judge himself mm. take the matter. Would take the matter in his hand. 
And I believe the time has come when laws like these must be introduced at our conscious nation parliament. So it was really a travesty that the judge could not or dismiss, dismiss the jurors and take the matter in hand according to the evidence already produced and move the matter. Instead, you have all of these things. This could not happen in England. So I, that is what I understand. Mm. I'm subject to correction. But we need to look at the British law in respect to this kind of development. Thank you very much. All right, Carla, thank you for your contribution to the program. Let's head back to the phone lines. We'll take this call. Hello, Carla. Good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, Devon. Devon, if the crime scene is being burnt, what I tell you? <laughs> for your hoid, you for your me? hoid, for your hoid evidence. And that alone could tell anybody what the, out, what the outcome would have been if they never burned the crime scene. That's all I got to say. All right, Carla, thank you <laughs> thank for your you. contribution. Let's take this call. Hello, Carla, you're on the air. Good morning. Hello, Carla, good morning. You're on the air. Okay, we're not getting that, Carla. All right, the phone lines remain open. Call us at 465-2555 or 718-577-2916. We have about um, just a few minutes left before we wrap up in preparation for the midday newscast. You're listening to The Edge here on ZIZ Radio, 96.1 FM. I'm your host, Devon Collier. Yes, and thank you so much for joining me in the program for today. I shared with the listeners the judgment regarding Adija Vibes Cartel Palmer and his co-accused in the murder of Clive Lizard Williams. And the judgment was given on March 14, 2024. We'll head back to the phone lines and we'll continue taking some more calls as we get views and opinions on this. Hello, Carla, you're on the air. Good morning. Good morning again, Devon. Let me tell you something. And this is my opinion. You see, what the court in England, what the, the court in England, the, the court send it back the matter to them. It just let the court peep the papers and say, man, I got this thing all around. I deal with I matter down there and then when I get it right and I wanna come back, I will come back. But they start wrong from Jamaica. From with all of these incidents and support. And the judge the take the the matter in, in his hand. Right? And whether squash all those jewels, get fresh jewels. The crime scene that burned down and what have you, it finger pointed to whosoever been accused that the building burned down because now they're getting close to the the, the, the exhibit. So the needle just turn back over the whole matter and get it solved. Because if they ain't do such, once this happened, breakthrough. Then you know you're going to find a lot of content, content with, with court matters and this and that and that kind of story. So the best thing you do, go back to the matter. You hear me? Mm -hmm. All right, Devon. All yeah. right, Carla, thank you for your contribution to the program. Do we have any more calls? All right, it is 11.53. If we have any more, we, I can take at least one more before we wrap up the conversation. But if you're just tuning in, we are listening to The Edge here on ZIZ Radio, 96.1 FM. And I shared with uh, the listeners the judgment regarding Adija Vibes Cartel Palmer and his co-accused in the murder of Clive Lizard Williams. And uh, the Privy Council is um, sending the case back to the Court of Appeal in Jamaica and they didn't uh they, they did not decide on the merit of the case but rather the process and you know i mentioned at least three cases of jury misconduct 
and so we saw where this case was going um, where an attempt was made for um, there to be some sort of um, what's the word I'm looking for here mishap let, let me use that word mishap right uh, very unfortunate but I will encourage you implore you to keep your ears to the ground stay tuned to the media as they share as we share more information regarding vibes cartel and whether he's going to be released this will be very interesting but i can tell you it is um, being talked about in all corners of the caribbean and people are looking forward some are looking forward to his release others are not and that is natural everybody is entitled to their own opinion but this is a high profile case eh? this is a very very high profile case and i'm so happy that i got this judgment i was able to print it and go through it and get a better understanding so as it is right now vibes cartel um is not free but is suggesting that he should be free and suggesting that they do the process all over again as the attorney alluded to the question of a of a retrial as a topic for another day and the questions come up as to whether they would be able to do a mistrial, you know. <laughs> You've been listening to the Edgy and Zenized Radio, 96.1 FM, for Friday, March 15, 2024. I have been your host, Devon Cornelius. Until next time, you guys stay safe. Continue to enjoy the rest of your Friday. Have a great weekend. Don't drink and drive. Don't text and drive. Y'all take care. Use this weekend to spend time with your family, friends, loved ones, and most importantly, cherish them, love them, respect them. Have a good one. Stay tuned to Zelizer.